What's up, YouTube? Welcome to today's video where we are going to go over the events from 2021 because on November 4th, millions of people will return to PoE to play the events and PoE will be at the top of Twitch once again and it's going to be a glorious return to glory. But all jokes aside, we do want to see some pretty cool events because the events are kind of fun, or at least some of them are. So I'm going to go over and rank all of the events from 2021. Now, if you see here, two Tabula Rasas and Burning Ground, what does that actually mean? That means that person fought the Burning Man. But GGG announced events for November 4th, 2022. And they say there's going to be around two to four events. Not really sure how many there are going to be. But last year, GGG hosted a series of five events. Not one, not two, but five. Which included events completely different from the core gameplay. And some of these were really, really good. And some of these were actually really, really bad. And made me want to actually quit PoE once again. But these events in the past lasted for 10 days. And the bad part about 10 days is there's actually some overlap. For instance, if you wanted to do Endless Delve, and then you were going to compete in the Gauntlet, you would be missing three days to get as deep as possible. So it kind of disincentivizes you from really trying if you know you want to play another event later on. So say you want to play Endless Heist. What did I just say? Did I just say I wanted to play Endless Heist? No one wants to play Endless Heist. But... If you were going to play Endless Heist and then you wanted to play Atlas Invasion, you would be missing three days. So it'll be interesting to see if there's going to be any overlap whatsoever this time around. Now there was also Battle Royale. This mode was extremely lit. It was released on December 8th, 22nd, and 29th. I actually do wonder if GGG will bring back Battle Royale or will they have realized it was an abject failure like the reason that Battle Royale doesn't really work is because PoE is a pl pretty global game and having combat that relies on ping is really, really bad, especially when a lot of times you have 150 or 200 ping maybe. And then if you don't have servers that are pretty global or you have a very like loose filter for the latency, then you're not going to get enough players because Battle Royale needs a lot of players to even load up the game. So a lot of times, like after Battle Royale hype died down, it was actually impossible to start a game. And the queue system in PoE for Battle Royale was horrible. If you could have actually queued for Battle Royale while you were actually logged in onto your current character, it would be a different story. But the way that they did the queue system just made it so that there was no way that game mode would ever have any longevity. Now, first off, we're going to rank the events from the worst to the best. Now, I don't really think it takes a PhD. You don't need a rocket scientist degree to know that Endless Heist was going to be the worst event. Now, this event, straight up terrible. There's no sugarcoating it. Endless Heist was awful. And this was the only event that I played. And I did play all of these events that I kind of stopped after the first like three to four hours. I was like, huh, this is not very fun. This event is pretty lame. What am I going to be doing after I finish my character and I get to like level 70 to 80? Well, guess what? I'm just going to be running more and more contracts and more and more blueprints over and over and over again until I get to a level 100. Now, that's actually one of the more annoying things about all of these events is that all of these events outside of Gauntlet and Endless Delve pretty much devolve into some XP race. So if you can see here... This is the ladder for Endless Heist. And actually, the number one group all played together. So they are actually doing group play with like XP gear, trying to get level 100 and Endless Heist. I cannot imagine a worse way to spend your time together. Like that has got to be up there with the worst experiences of all time in PoE. Now, the nice part about this is that this does present an alternative form of leveling. And you did get Ascendancy passive skill points without having to do lab. You did get this passive skill point uh, respects and stuff like that and your skill points. And it was kind of nice not having to do the campaign. And if you let me choose, I might even choose Endless Heist to level up my character over doing the campaign for like the 50th or 100th time. 
Now, for this event, we did have Lily, which sold me skill gems, and it also did divination card turn in. So that was actually a pretty big bonus. Now, next up, we have the event that I actually thought was pretty bad overall. And this was pretty much because GGG really put very little thought into the Delirium Everywhere event. So this was another XP race to get to a level 100. So almost every single one of these events are an XP race. Now, the gameplay was pretty much identical to the core game. There's really nothing different about Delirium Everywhere. Now, every single zone and map had a predetermined level of Delirium. This means that while you're leveling, you would be able to get, what's it called, like a Delirium percent on a certain zone. So if we look, actually look at this, and this is actually hilarious. This is the average player experience when they played this event in Ledge. Now, is it really a good idea to not kind of cap out the Delirium level? I think this was probably like 80%. Now you might be wondering, oh, it's going to be better by the time we get to the climb or lower prison or upper prison. However, little did you know that once you got to the climb, it was like still 80%. Then you got to prison and guess what? It was 90% delirium. And then you're like, oh, upper prison is going to be a lot easier with Brutus, right? Nope, 97%. And then you're like, oh, finally we got finished with Brutus. And then we go to the next zone, which is, I don't even remember the zone after Brutus. And it ended up being like 80% again. And it was just a terrible experience. I can be safe to say that most people who actually played this event probably did not get past Act 1 or Brutus. And it was just a horrible, horrible experience. If they wanted to do an event like this again, they should probably cap the Delirium level to like maybe 40% in the beginning of the game and then slowly raise it. And another thing that they could potentially do for this event is to make it have rotations hourly or bi-hourly or whatever or daily so that the game feels a little bit different because they never change up the levels of Delirium so it was always the same maps over and over again. So for me personally, I actually ended up getting level 100 first in this event in SSF and I just ended up farming Acid Caverns to level 100 because I think it was only like 20 or 30% Delirium and it just felt the best to run that over and over again. I do think that this event has some potential, but in the current way that it was implemented, it was really, really bad, and it just felt awful to play. Now, next up, we have Atlas Invasion, and I do think Atlas Invasion was actually one of the most fun leagues that they actually implemented. And the only thing about this league is that every area contains five endgame map bosses. Now, this led to some pretty cool things, and you can see here... This is a duelist in Mudflash just running around and here's in the back is Shaper doing a Shaper Beam. So it did lead to a pretty interesting leveling experience, but I do think that most people probably just ended up running past the bosses for their dear life. Especially early on when you don't have any resist whatsoever on your gear. It is pretty scary fighting any of these map bosses. Now, every single one of these map bosses were guaranteed to drop unique so you could actually get a pretty decked out leveling character you could get a tabula you could get a gold rim just by farming some of the low level zones and it felt pretty fun it was a really fun experience at the start however the main problem with this event is that after a while most people know that map bosses are pretty power creeped out of the game and arch nemesis rares are actually miles more powerful nowadays than a map boss so once your character was strong enough the end game map bosses pretty much just fell over like, you wouldn't even know that you accidentally killed a map boss. And this was the same case for me. And I did play Poisonous Concoction Occultist in both of these events. Now, so the main thing was that the map bosses were pretty much a joke, right? So this time around, it's going to be even worse because there's Arch Nemesis. So Arch Nemesis rares or Arch Nemesis Essence rares are literally going to be million times stronger than these map bosses. However, the nice part was you could play SSF, you could actually experience having a lot of loot drop. Although I do think with the current Arch Nemesis loot structure, you do find a decent amount of uniques. So it will be interesting to see if they actually re-implement this type of league back into the game. Now next up, we have Endless Delve, and this is actually my favorite event because it shows how fun leveling can be without the current campaign. And an Endless Delve lovely is pretty like no holes barred, just a lot of action. You pretty much just go straight down, straight deep into the hole, right? So it felt really, really good. 
And it was well, just like an alternative way of playing the game. I do think that the campaign is probably one of the biggest problems of the game. It feels really, really bad to have to do the current campaign. Maybe because the begetting acts aren't that well made or because we've just done it so many times. Now the goal of the event was a little bit different than the previous ones where you just had to get a level 100. This event was different in that you wanted to get as deep as possible in the delve. Now one of the most annoying parts about this event was definitely the fact that there was no crafting bench. And I wonder if GGG does decide to implement some of these events that aren't based on just the core game. If they will actually allow us to have a crafting bench and stuff like that. But in this event I did play a store brand inquisitor and boy oh boy I found it impossible to get a cluster jewel for brand damage and I think I literally went crazy doing this event. Now for people who are wondering who actually won this event, I think in the end, I think Detonate Dead actually ended up winning because of some shenanigans with corpse life scaling. So in these events, a lot of times GGG provides us with these uniques that end up being super, super good. And it kind of changes the whole way that the game is played. So in the future, I do wonder if the gameplay will be a lot better at the beginning, if we're able to access some of these OP level uniques, this was probably one of my favorite uniques they had. And this was pretty much a shield that gave you 30% spell block. And I think I actually used the shield at Endless Delve all the way till I was level like 95 or something like that, purely because it was that strong. And then you had some other stuff here that was like a 12% crit dagger that allowed you to play like cast on crit Eye of Winter or something like that. And then there's other ones here, plus one frenzy charge. Now this one here had to increase ignite duration on enemies, which was, was really, really good, I think, for Detonate Dead. Then you have Rust of Winter. So if GGG ever provided like us the choice of using these uniques while we're leveling, I do think that it would provide a much better leveling experience. And it's not like these weapons are like powerful forever. Like they do fall off outside of that shield. So I do think that if you include uniques like this, it could have a much better beginner experience. Now, Endless Lakes is a real possibility. I am kind of interested in seeing how they could implement Endless Lakes. But let me know down in the comments below what events you think GGG will implement and what has been your favorite event of all time. They could always go the direction of doing a Mayhem event, which is an event where you have like multiple league mechanics at the same time. So you can have Legion, Breach. But nowadays with like the Atlas passive tree, I feel like events like that lose a lot of its meaning because we can already kind of create our own mayhem with the Atlas passive tree. Now, lastly, I really hope they don't have any overlapping events because unless you know life to get a level 100, you're always going to feel like that there's no point in playing because someone else is just going to have an extra three or four days on you. But thanks for watching everyone. I do hope that they have more prizes besides just demigods for the top classes. Let me know down in the comments below if you will be playing any of these events. I'm not really sure if I will be currently. I will probably play like maybe one or two before Dragonflight comes out. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exalteds, and divines than me. And see you next time. Bye. Damn.